Hello everyone, welcome to Fearfully Greedy. In today's episode, I'll share a tool I made to calculate the intrinsic value of a business. It's actually a net present value discounted cash flow calculator model. If this sounded like mambo jumbo or made little sense to you, don't worry. It's a very simple tool and I will show you in a minute how to use it and what's its function. First, a quick intro to the channel. In case you are new, I'm passionate about investing and bettering myself. In this effort, I share my investing thoughts and ideas over a portfolio I publicly share with you in this channel. Every month I add 500 euros to the portfolio, some months I add more. Uh, so far the portfolio has been alive for 220 days and we're curren currently sitting at 18,900 euros with a small gain of 18%. You can see here that since the last video I bought 200 shares of Shinoken. At the end of the video I will give you a full update on the portfolio and a bit about the position. And if you are interested in this and like my content, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Now into today's topic of calculating the intrinsic value of a business. Full disclaimer, this and all my videos are not to be considered financial advice please consult a professional or do your own research before investing. Today's tool I will share with you is also just for informational purpose only and should not be considered as a buy and sell tool for your investments. So this is the tool. As you can see, it's a net present value DCF calculator. Very simple model. I mean, you can do much more complex things. And I already think this plenty of complexity. Like the most complicated thing here to, are the inputs, what we'll put into the model. Uh, because the model is pretty simple, it's just discounting the expected cash flows into the present value, right? Uh, I will make an example, but first keep in mind that this tool has some flaws. Like it doesn't do a very qualitative analysis of a company that you should do on your own. So it's more quantitative and also most of the work I said it's from the inputs like the things that go here in the shares, the free cash flow, all that, the growth rates, the discount rates, that's what really drives this valuation, right? So most of the work has to be done into making these figures and these predictions. And then the tool is pretty simple. I have to be honest at this point uh, in my investing life, I don't use this so much uh, because when you have done a hundred of these ones, you know the number and Maybe you, you don't know it to the exact same, like to the exact decimal point or to two decimal uh, places, but you know, more or less, like if the number is not clear enough, like before doing the model, it may be too close, right? So b with this being said, uh, let's get into the, uh, to the tool. I will do an example. Uh, to use this tool, you can use many websites, right? You, you need the financial data of the company and then do your research so you can get the right figures here. As far as of websites, you can use investing.com, wallmine.com, stockrow.com, quickfs.net, Finbis, uh, Edgar from, from the official tool from the government, you can pull the official document, documents there, or even in the company's investor relations page. There you can get the documents that the company provides for you, and from there extract these numbers, right? Now let's get into an example. So I picked a random one, stock row. So now we're here in stock row. Stock row is great. You can get a lot of data from a company. I will do it from Intel. I think it's a quite stable company. Maybe some turmoil in the near future, but it will serve us for the, for the analysis, right? Uh, here you can get a lot of data for the DCF model. Uh, I will go straight to the point, uh, but here you can do a lot of qualitative analysis of a company. But just for the DCF, what we need is down here, the number of shares. So 4,000, almost 100, we could put 490, right? This is in millions, right? So keep in mind these numbers here go in millions. Then we have to do, go to the cash flow. And in the annual form, we will see from right to left the, the amounts in the year. Top, top figure is net income. And we're interested for this CF, we're interested in operating cash flows, right? Operating cash flow is a measure of the amount of cash generated by a company's normal business operations, right? That's what we want to know. How much money does this business make, right? So if we see here, 
we can see quite solid. What we don't want to see is like one year you have half this amount or one year you have five times this amount, something ridiculous because then it's super hard to value. I also added into the Excel a small calculator. So we can say 10 years ago we had 21. This is our billions, but doesn't matter. It's just for the growth rate. Five years ago we had 19. Then we can go three years ago, 22. Oops, 22 and right now 35 right so we can see that on the last years it has been increasing more than the last year but I'm very very conservative so for me also I think that the near future is not so clear for Intel uh, we will I think we still have a huge margin of safety but from a five I would give maybe two percent right I would say we would do a 2%. I never go super crazy with the growth rates. This would be all the growth rates. And then uh, what number, right? So we can see here that some of the previous number would be 35. I think we could do maybe 30. I think being conservative here helps us a lot, right? So put this amount and later we can play with it. Then. CAPEX, so capital expenditures, uh, normally known as CAPEX, are the funds used by the company to car acquire, upgrade, and maintain physical or intangible assets such as property, buildings, and industrial plants and technology and software, or equipment. This is what we need to make to keep the business running, right? And sometimes to expand the business, right? So there's a thing called maintenance CAPEX, which tells you what we would need to just keep the things as they are. But in reality, I think using the real capital expenditures is more realistic because we're actually investing. So the company is as is, no? What I think doing the the process of the, of thinking, if we didn't want to expand, what would it be? It's too many assumptions, so I don't like to use that. We can see here that on the first year we had maybe 10. Five years ago, we had like seven, so it went down, and then it went up again. So uh, three years ago, we had uh, almost 12, and now 14, right? So we can see in, ter in 10 years, it has grown quite a bit. I wouldn't hate to put like 3%. Like we were very conservative on the on the growth rate, I would be conservative conservative on the growth rate of the capex also, right? If you have an idea that maybe this is not like this, like you expect it, it to grow more or less, you can play it in here, right? And also in growth companies, you can do like higher growth on the first years, then less growth on the last years. This is the terminal value until judgment day. So you can play here. I don't tend to play with this a lot. I just added this for tools that you can use if you want, right? Um, then I would use the high, some of the highest, so 14 billion, right? And from here, what we need is to apply the discount rate. I use usually 6%, not because 6% is the right amount, right? Some people say that here you have you have to put the weight average cost of capital. I tend to put the same amount for every business. And I do an average of the usual treasury rate for 30 years, right? Um, I think 6% is reasonable. I think doing the very low interest rates at the moment is not that reasonable. You can do what you want, right? This would be the discount rate or uh, weight average cost of capital, right? And then my mar margin of safety is usually 50%. So less than 50% discount I don't invest. And we can see that right now Intel it's trading at 62. Also, I added another cell where you can add if it has a lot of debt or if it has a lot of cash, right? We can see it in the balance sheet. Let's see uh, on the last quarter, right? This would be the last quarter. Net uh, total current assets. So this would be the more liquid assets, 47 billion total assets, uh, double that. And then liabilities, current liabilities is half of the current assets, so 25. And non-current liabilities is 
about as much as our current assets. So I would say they don't have a lot, a lot of cash and they don't owe a lot, a lot of cash. So I think, I think with Intel, we don't have to play with that. But there are some companies that they don't produce a lot of cash, but they own a lot of cash. So you could play with that here. Right? You would use a plus for cash and a minus for debt. And we get a $92 per share valuation and 33% margin of safety. So this is under 50% that I told you about. I can give you like an example if you wanted to play with a growth company. Let's say we expected um, Intel to grow at 10%. For the next three years, 5% for the next five years, you can see that the price increases a lot. Right? That's the problem a bit with the growth companies that really you can put whatever and the price share increases a lot. So you are willing to pay a lot, a lot of cash, right? If we go over the five years, then maybe 5%, right? So ridiculous amount, right? You, it's so high. If we expect the company to grow a lot, it's part of evaluation, right? It's not that value and growth are completely different. Like if, if you think with a proper analysis that the company will grow a lot, you should put it in, in there, right? That's pretty much it for the, the tool I wanted to bring. Very simple. I mean, you can add a lot of more complexity into this, but I think it's a good starting point for someone that is starting in investing to see why a company's price as it is, right? So with this, you can get uh, an idea of that, right? You have a link uh, of the spreadsheet in the description. It's free for you to do whatever you want. Copy into your Google Drive, change it, adapt it, evolve it. Uh, if you think something is wrong, fix it. If you think it's right, use it. Uh, it's for you. Enjoy. For the next video, I will share you my checklist, what the company has to be doing for me to finally invest. It keeps me on check they're the checklist uh, name um, but it's really useful it's an idea from guy spear and also manish parbra it's very very nice because sometimes you look over something you like a company too much and maybe you you are missing something so checklist helps you in that and in doing the proper analysis of the company so if if you would like to to stay tuned for that be sure to subscribe, throw me a like, it helps a lot. Now I will give you an update on the portfolio because I added the position. Uh, so if you are interested in that, we'll do that now. Here we are in my DeGiro account, right? We can see my top holdings still very similar. It's just I added Shinoken on some like last week. And you, you can see the transaction I bought at 1,213. And right now it's where I'm losing on close to seven or eight percent. So with the next month cash, uh, I might buy more if it keeps falling. Then I did the transfer. So you can see here the deposit of 500 on the 16th of February. That's the only thing I did. You know, with this value investing, I don't trade. <laughs> I don't do a lot of things. And most of the times I will just buy and hold. Uh, when they come close to the, my valuation of the company, I will sell and look for better opportunities. Now we can check on share side. You can see from 13 of July actually is the first day. And then I kept buying, I kept building up, right? I added 16,000 euros uh, to the account at this point. Uh, but we're sitting on 20% capital gain, in reality close to 3,000 uh, euros. Uh, so we are losing a bit on the currency gain. You have seen this since the start of the channel, but I'm pretty happy with the results. I wish they didn't go up so fast. I wish I could have bought some of them at cheaper prices, but I think they are still very undervalued. So that's why I keep buying of some of them. We can see maybe if we don't group more clear results. So at the moment, the portfolio is at 18,900 euros, right? Uh, also remember I have an Excel. Okay, so this is the, the Excel the numbers are almost the same. I get the data from Google, like Google Finance. So sometimes it's a bit different than the brokerage, uh, but mostly the same. It's just so I can share a link with you. So the link is in the description. The link for the DCF model is also there, intrinsic value calculator. So you will have that there. And you can keep track of the portfolio. The only things I added, um, well, the, I added the position. You can see I'm down like, close to 9%, but I also added a money weighted rate of return. That's because I had most of my money very recently. So that's weights in that. 
in reality this is very high so you will see that during the years that I keep posting this portfolio you will see this will get very much closer to to this thing here right and then I compared my results to the S&P and to the Nasdaq also right so I had some more information you can see here how I calculated I did the cash flows and I chose the lowest fee ETFs that I could get uh, for Bangor that for the S&P 500 for the Nasdaq and I calculated the price on each time I did the cash flow as if I would automatically buy the that share so this is a real comparison real life comparison that if I with the same cash I just bought the ETF without thinking I would get the result so at the moment I'm a bit over 10% from the Nasdaq, a bit over 9% on the S&P 500. So not too bad, not too good. This is too early to tell. Uh, in many years, we will we'll see the, the final result. So, well, I hope you liked it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next video. I said it's a checklist. Uh, you have a link for the DCF model on the description. And everyone be safe. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.